Well, this morning, uh, just uh, going to head down the Marple Locks. It's uh, it's raining again, so it's going to be a uh, another a wet morning. Hopefully, it'll clear up a little bit this afternoon. Just be showers. But at the moment, uh, we're waiting for the locks to open. Um, they open at 8:30 for the first uh, boats to go down. I'm pretty sure we're first in the queue, which will be mean that uh, we will be uh, um, the locks being set in our direction, which will be fantastic. Um, Suzanne's going to go wander down to the locks, and when they're opened, we'll. Uh, We'll go from there, and generally, what happens with the CRT, well, they'll, they'll put a lock on the on the um, the gate paddles so that you can't open them. But uh, looks like it's uh, it's going to be uh, uh, start of a day going down these locks, and then general cruising after that. Okay, we're coming down the Marple Lock, so I'll just span, pan around quickly because I'm thinking slowly. We've gone through the first lock, which is over there, quite a deep lock. I think all of them are quite deep locks, so uh, just got to keep an eye on it. Obviously, as you go down, there's a what they call a sill. Um, see the mark, the uh, metal there. Boat and uh, yeah, the sort of, you get your boat back into the boat port on that, they'll actually um, invert the boat, they'll put the bottom down, those of the boat down, and the boat will, the bow uh, will submerge, and of course the boat will fill up with water and it'll, uh, it'll uh, flood and sink. So uh, we we'll have to stay ahead of that, so that's one thing we have to, why somebody needs to be in attendance at the helm um, while we're going down the lock. But as you can see, it's quite deep. And, um, and also, too, the other thing is try and keep away from the front of the gates because you don't want to don't want to pound into the gates um, because they it just adds to the wear and tear on them. And thankfully, it's not raining, so we've got the camera out. One thing you should never trust over here is the English weather forecasting.
<laughs> I knew that I was watching the bathroom window, that's all. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I was watching the bathroom window, I was like, that could be, that, that could be really messy, but I... There's one other one that's got a few of them, but otherwise...
Rawai? Rawai, yep. So the bridge we're coming to is actually the main railway line. And just around the corner, there's going to be some spectacular bridges, which we'll get to in a minute. But after all of that, and thanks to those beautiful people who are volunteers, that have helped us all the way down the locks, we've made good time. So we're gonna pull off around the corner here and make ourselves a well overdue cup of tea. And we'll continue through to Manchester. So this is the Marple Aqueduct, which will give us a really nice view of the train bridge as well. And we're just going to stop on the other side of this bridge. So we'll come for a little walk and show you this in a little bit more detail. As you can see, it's a little bit narrow because it's made for a narrow boat. There you go. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Right, so we just did a little stop and I went all the way down to the bottom, took some nice photos which I hope you enjoy and turned around and walked all the way back and now we're coming into what's called Rose Cutting, Rose Hill, Rose Hill Cutting. It used to be a tunnel and you can see it at the end, what the tunnel was like, but it collapsed. Um, and it was too expensive to try and fix the roof so they needed to get the canal open as quickly as possible because uh, time is money so they decided to take it down and turn it into a cutting rather than a tunnel so here we go
Wide bank panel. 308 yards. And the rain starts. Come on, we've got to get in that tunnel faster. <laughs> So this is our first tunnel, we'll be going through a few tunnels today. We have a, a light at the front that you can see starting to illuminate the ceiling. We've also had the horn, probably heard the horn. That's to let people know at the other end that there's somebody coming through because there is no towpath inside the tunnel so we don't know and cannot walk through ahead to warn anybody that we're coming.
next tunnel coming up, it's Woodley Tunnel. This one has a tow path on the side which makes it extremely narrow so it is only one way traffic. So again that's why we sounded the horn to make sure that anybody at the other end could hear us. You can see the other end but it's always good to let people know just in case.